Okay, hey guys, how's it going? So, this is Kari here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And in this video, I wanted to go over Royal Guard. Uh, super cool character. Um, I, I've been having a lot of fun with him. I think he's pretty cool. So, I wanted to break down his kit, why I like him, where I like to use him. And so, let's get into it. And also, I do want to say that there'll be timestamps down in the description based on like where, um, what I'm talking about. So, you can kind of jump to if, if there's anything in particular you want to hear. So, all right, let's let's get into it. All right, so let's pull him up. He is a high elf, uh, epic character. Um, I think he really excels in dungeons. He's also good in clan boss. I wouldn't say he's great in clan boss, but I would say he's good. Um, good there, but great in dungeons. And with the with 1.8 coming out and then dungeons being a, a bigger focus with the harder difficulty requirements on the higher levels, I think having good... Dungeon character is, gonna, is is definitely going to be a lot more important nowadays. I feel like you didn't really need to make your roster too specified to beat some of like the higher end dungeons nowadays, especially in like when you're getting to rank twenty, rank nineteen. It's you're going to be so you're going to need to really focus on affinity. You're going to really need to focus on a solid team. So having characters that are really um, more dungeon focused is going to start to become a lot more important. Also, um, now when you're trying to get arbiter. Um, there's a lot of like, uh, you need to auto like spider. You need to auto like these harder dungeons. And I think Royal Guard or multiple Royal Guards or a combination of Royal Guard and um, uh, like Cold Heart is going to be a way to do that. So I think that's where he's um, why he's going to be a good character. So let's get into his kit. Uh, his first move is a really reliable defense down. It's a text one enemy has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decrease in debuff for two turns. And it goes up when you skill book him. This is kind of his bread and butter like main move. It's going to be takedown, attacks all enemies, damage increases according to enemy max HP. Um, it's It says damage is based on attack and enemy max HP, but from my experience in trying to put a ton of offense on this dude, um, it does almost nothing. Like almost nothing. So even with a ton of offense, you barely see a difference. So I highly recommend... Not really bothering with offense when it comes to building this guy. I'll talk about that later, but I just want to bring that up. And then Hamstring attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 60% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. Each hit also has a 60% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 25%. This is really good against pretty much every dungeon except Dragon and Clan Boss. So, really cool move. You combine this with other characters um, that also have turn meter reduction, you can really... Um, make them take significantly less turns or almost no turns at all. I like based on how my team's built, I have uh, multiple characters that have turn meter reduction and there's a lot of dungeons that once you finally get to that final boss using hamstring, using like premeditative strike on Tyrell, it gets to the point where just the boss is not going. So very cool move really helps out in dungeons. So, and then lastly, we got his aura, which is increased ally attack in, in dungeons by 35%. I think this is a really great aura um, for, because especially when it comes to the, these harder in dungeons, having a good care, uh, having increased attack really helps out your AOE uh, champions. And the trash in in the initial stages of dungeons is getting to the point where it's harder than the boss. Like you, once you get through the trash, getting to the boss and beating the boss is usually a lot easier. So having an increased attack for those AOE characters is actually really nice. So wouldn't sleep on his aura. I think it's a very good aura. Um, okay, and so then next, I wanted to talk about how I build him. I think when it comes to Royal Guard, uh, I think his he's one of the hardest characters in the game to, to gear, in my opinion, because there's so many different things he needs for him to really start to excel. I don't really have him fully there yet, as you can see, but... First thing I want to say, the set bonuses, like the ideal set bonuses, in my opinion, would be lifesteal and uh, speed. I would say those are the, what you're going for. You want to have them at 100% crit rate. Um, having a lot more crit damage, but then not having that 100% crit rate, you'll, you'll notice that the the damage of his takedown really needs to crit. And then having more crit damage is just a bonus. Um, so you're looking for 100% crit rate. You're looking for a lifesteal set. You're looking for high speed so you can you know go through his cooldown to get to take down more often. And then also you're looking for um, like uh, survivability because it, you, the, the attack stat, like I was saying earlier, doesn't really matter too much. So you want like HP percentage on his chest, um, and you want like HP percentage on his on his gloves when you can get them. 
Um, speed for sure here on his boots. Um, crit damage for sure on the amulet if that would ever drop. And then, you know, I would totally be wearing that. But it's pretty much the combination of damage and survivability. It's, it's a strange combination, hard to come by. But once you get it, I think it really pays off. He's a really good character. So that's how I build him. This is how I got him mastered. He's definitely a war master. It's pretty much no question about that. Like, I just want to kind of highlight the key ones. I think one that I don't have that I kind of wish I did have is this uh, evil eye here. I think this really helps a lot. Um, but mainly for just the stuff that I actually, like, it's really hard to argue. It's going to be, I think sniper is really good. I mean, it just increases his chance of landing all like his debuffs, like the speed down, his turn meter, his uh, defense down. I think that's worth the extra, the 5% there. That's really nice. And this one's really good too. Master Hexer having a 30% chance to extend it. So you get a longer defense down, you get a longer, you know, speed down. Very good. This is also super important. Um, this is just a no brainer. Pretty much all characters that apply debuffs are, you're going to be kind of going in this direction. But uh, what I've been wishing I didn't do. Well, it, it, I think it's really debatable because this cycle of magic, it doesn't look like much, but it's actually really nice for the clan boss. So having this 5% chance of decreasing a cooldown by a random skill by one turn. Um, since in the clan boss, you're never going to be using hamstring. The only cooldown you have is takedown. So it actually procs a decent amount. 5% over the course of so many turns um, actually procs a decent amount. You get more damage through takedown that way. So I like this. But for dungeons and trying to cheese bosses, especially like Spider, I would really like Evil Eye. Having that when he actually just autos, getting that 20% reduced turn meter, very nice. I have that on a couple other characters, and it's just so impactful that I wish I had it on him as well. So it's, I can um, you really lock down that boss and make sure he doesn't go. But um, it's so expensive to to reset masteries. I'm probably just going to settle for this. It's really not that big of a deal. It's just something I would I would like. All right, and so I just got some footage, and so I'm just going to run run you guys through a Minotaur match. Also, we kind of run you through um, Spider. Okay, so first I'm going to be doing level uh, Siege 15 Minotaur. I really like him for this, mainly for his like big damage with his takedown, but, uh, but for this, mainly it's the uh, turn meter reduction. I think it's really good. And so I, I really like having... Terrell go first here on these guys because of the defense down. I like timing your AOE is is very important. So he does that. It's also kind of cool. Just I don't have, I didn't do this intentionally, but it is kind of cool that um, Kaimar reset it so he gets to do it again. So it really cleans this up. It's actually a pretty um, quick uh, full auto. And then I really like that mastery that. Uh, minus 20% turn meter mastery it ends up helping quite a bit and there's a lot of scenarios where that first hit um, really helps it really establishes um, your setup and make sure people survive um, like especially on pretty much everyone except uh, every dungeon except dragon and so here you can see kind of get an idea of the damage um, also it's kind of nice at how much life steal he gets from that one move so it really helps his survivability um, you know, it looks like he's getting dipping pretty low and then he just goes right back up to full health. And then now it's to the point with, you know, the defense down and then he usually gets hamstring up, um, quick enough to where it just, it, it with combination with Tyrell, it just kind of locks him down and the Minotaur can't move. Uh, it's a really solid way. And then he closes it out. Like if the, he did, if the Minotaur didn't have this buff here, he would probably have just died from half health because it, it does like 200 K. It goes from like 90 K to like 200. So got a pretty cool. I really like using them for this. It really helped me uh, make, make this team more at full auto when I had lesser gear. Nowadays it's super easy with just like these four characters in world guard Tyrell. But before that, you know, it wasn't nearly this easy. All right. And with that, I wanted to show you guys Spider. It's it's kind of like a work in progress, but a really cool thing you can do with multiple Royal Guards, very similar to like a Cold Heart strategy. So let's get into that. Highlight how good he is versus these kind of bosses like Spider, like these high HP bosses, Spider. We already showed you Minotaur. But then also I want to highlight, like, how as I was saying, how the, the move doesn't really matter when it comes to attack like a mount. It's all about the max HP percentage. So 
this is a level 40 version and it's going to do not much like worse damage comparatively to this royal guard and so i have what i do and i my whole goal is to eventually make this a full auto team because he'll only do takedown if there's defense down so i'll have tyrell tyrell goes first does defense down then he goes then he goes and then kaimar will reset the cooldowns and then they'll go again and hopefully kill the spider on auto and, and that's going to be really important because later on when you're trying to get um, Arbiter, you need to be able to auto these really high stages of spiders. So just thinking about that is is, is nice. Let's see how well this works. Usually it takes about a minute. Oh, see, see, I'm autoing it. Okay, luckily, luckily I got the defense down off. Okay, and then see if I didn't stop that auto, I have my Kaimar going too fast because he's mainly an arena character. So I'm just gonna have him auto, and he would have like reset the cooldowns like on auto. He always resets the cooldowns whenever he can. And then here, I'm going to AOE here. He's going to get turn meter and go again. And then I have him. This is very important. Um, he, he's going to reduce cool down, or reduce turn meter off auto. It, it, there's a mastery that uh, the first time you do a non-AOE move, it does 20% reduced turn meter. It's very important for these dungeons. It's actually really nice. So here, and you'll watch turn meter reduction. Boom. And then, then we got turn meter reduction here. Cool thing about this is now Kaimar is going to go and reset that move again um, and both takedowns. So then now we go here. It's another 100. So it was 134. Um, also, a thing about this move is defense down really, really impacts the amount of damage it does, like crit rating does, and also defense down. So if you're not applying defense down, it doesn't really do that much. Yeah, boom. See, like, look at that. Like, he's he's a level forty four star with garbage gear, and he's still doing very close damage. Because that's why, um, especially in clan boss, making him just tanky and survivable with the crit damage and crit rate is going to be way more the way to go than offense. And then now we're going to do that. And he has no turn meter. He's never never gotten to go. I believe this one does a little bit more damage. And we'll close it out with this. Boom. So if I wasn't talking, it would have been a lot faster. But it's a pretty cool strategy. And you can just time it all and make this a full auto um, if I actually put the time in and, and did this. So I feel, like, I feel like this highlighted a few things about him. I think he's a really cool character. Um, ideally, uh, for something like this, uh, I want to say Cold Heart's better. But he's so much more versatile than Cold Heart that like he doesn't fill this niche nearly as well as Cold Heart does, but is also a pretty good character in his own right when it comes to when you've taken everything to account. All right, guys. Well, that should do it for this guide. If you have any other questions, be sure to hit me down in the comments below or uh, directly on Discord. I'll have that linked in the description. More than happy to answer any other questions you guys have currently uh, about Royal Guard. Um, and also I never got a chance to do this, but I want to say a big thank you to William. It was my first ever donation I've ever gotten. It was, um, really awesome and I really appreciate it. So want to say thank you there and I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.